Time to do some sketchy shit. Hope I get away with it. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Driveway Engineer. I'm JR. What you're looking at is my 1988 Toyota 4Runner. Uh, it's sitting over here at my nephew's house still, even though I told him I would get it out of here like a month ago. Um, whatever. Sorry, Trenton. There, there's a price to pay for being my nephew. Um, I really like this little thing, and I think it's super cool. What I have for it is a 1984 OM617 turbo diesel. It's a straight five. Love it when my battery dies in the middle of recording. Anyway, um, I have a 1984 OM617 Mercedes diesel to put in this thing, an R155 speed transmission. Uh, I bought that with the engine knocking. I knew it was knocking. I didn't know why it was knocking, but it ran and it drove and it was 400 bucks. So I figured, why not? They're pretty difficult for me to find here in Michigan. It seems like the junkyard, the rust have cleaned most of them. Um, I had this whole project in mind for over a year now, not necessarily with a forerunner. I, I was going to look for a Wrangler, but this came up um, and I still love it. But yeah, uh, so what follows is the destruction of my OM617. The number one piston is melted down. It's about 28 thou undersize. Uh, the bore is about 23 thou out of round. Um, the other four seem fine. There's no damage to the crank, no damage, no visible damage to the rod. But the problem is that like, if it was an LS, I would just go get another one, right? There's no other ones around. They're very difficult for me to find. Um, I found a long block for 200 bucks, and the guy pulled it because it has low compression. So for all I know, it may be in the same boat as the one I have. But more importantly, Mercedes uses three different piston sizes. There's a zero, there's a one, and there's a two, and there's about a two and a half thou difference between the smallest and the largest one. So my engine's all one and twos. For all I know, this new engine could be all zeros. So I decided to go ahead and bite the bullet and put new liners in it. And this video is about that. Um, I didn't know it before now, but it's very common in the tractor, tractor world and the uh, big truck world. I knew that they did it on ships for power generation and stuff to uh, pull the liners and press in new ones yourself by using welds to cool what happens is they can't expand in the block, and so when they cool, they pull it in and you can tap them out. So what follows here is that process. Uh, hope you enjoy, hope you learn something. It's a bit more involved than I typically do, but I'm gonna have a cool little diesel 4x4 for way less than a new Eco Diesel Wrangler. So I'm really excited about that. I'm really looking forward to this thing, which is kind of what gives me the courage to keep pressing on with it. Um, so I hope you enjoy, follow along and uh like and subscribe and here's how that went today i'm working on my om617 diesel for my uh forerunner and uh as you can see i have the head off i was never able to find the i just worked methodically as possible i was never really able to find the source of the knock so i just kept going um and i took the lower oil the upper oil pan i guess probably the part closer to the block i took that off i pulled a couple of rod caps um i found this is a number two i hope you guys can see that you can probably definitely see that something went through this engine it's pretty chewed up um I tell you now that this diesel is like the most disgusting engine I've ever touched. But uh, <clears throat> I just really couldn't find a smoking gun. Like like scored rods won't make it knock, as people pointed out online. Um, our scored bearings won't make it knock. They're not spun. Like they're fine. Just something went through there um, and dug in. So today I came out. I pulled the head off. I was thinking about pulling the pre-chambers. Sometimes the pre-chambers, these are the pre-chambers. Sometimes they'll break off or whatever. Um, I didn't see any evidence of that. I didn't see any evidence of any valves being out of whack or anything like that. Uh, 
So today I came out and I pulled the head off. The tops of all the pistons look fine. The bores look pretty okay. They had like an odd amount of rust in them, which was kind of weird to me. Um, I don't know if that was just from sitting overnight or what, but I don't know if you can see it. All of these have a little bit of ridge at the top and, and then a little bit of a uh, little bit of cross hatching at the bottom, except for this front one. This is number one. If you guys can see, that one is uh, got scuffs up and down on it. Um, when that piston came out, it was kind of obvious what the problem was. This thing, I don't know if this rod's bent or what. It doesn't look bent to me, but people online said they thought it was bent. Um, this piston, though, not only did it did it uh, scuff the cylinder bore, it's been slapping for a long time. It's 20,000 smaller than, than the, what the other ones are. All right, so this is the number one piston. You can see it's really, really scored. It measures about 20 thou or so smaller than what it's supposed to. I'll try to get that light a little more indirect. Um, it's really badly scored though, and, and I'm guessing that that's the trash that went through the engine that I saw in the main bearings and the rod bearings. You see some pretty heavy, uh, some pretty heavy scoring in those. My gut inclination is to do as little work as possible, right? But I do plan to keep this 4Runner for a long, long time. I plan to have this diesel around. Um, and pulling these liners sounds like fun. And I came across on the OM617 swaps group a method from, I hope I get the guy's name right, I believe it's Michael Southgate, uh, where he welded to the inside of the liners and it causes them when it shrinks when the weld cools it shrinks it causes it to pull in and i've removed slip fit components like that before i just never thought to apply the logic to uh cylinder liners and it sounds fun so i think i'm going to give it a whirl and uh i definitely can't wreck this any more than it is at this point if i didn't mention it it's 23 thou bigger this way than it is this way the way that the piston was in there rocking it was just in there doing the Harlem shake forever. So there's just no way I'm ever going to have compression on that cylinder even. I got a really nice cylinder crosshatch out of all the other ones. One or two other ones have some scratches in them too, but they're not that bad. And all the other pistons were fine. But I think I'm going to go ahead and do a DIY on removing these cylinders. And I'll set you guys up here and run my uh, welder with the Vulcan run some beads down there and see what happens like i said i can't make it any worse than it is so and it sounds fun so let me get you set up and uh i'll go ahead and run that run the welder through there and we'll see how this works if it works it definitely works i saw him do it but people who are good at things tend to make him look really easy so you can watch me fumble through it all right welder set on kill uh, we'll go ahead and run some beads through here and see what happens.
All right, I welded a little ledge on there. Let me grab my light. So that I had something to hit with a punch. Um, we'll give this a minute to cool down. And see if we can give her a tap, tap, tap a -roo on out. Tap it in. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap a -roo. I don't know if you can hear that, but I can hear them getting pulled in. So there we go. Um, it totally works. I'm having varying degrees of success. The front one came out in pieces. The middle two aren't moving for me. These ones came out. They definitely didn't fall out. Um, but it works. So there you go. You can do this too. I guess I'll show you guys whenever I get the sleeves in next week probably. How I press them in. But I mean... I'm just gonna get them cold and beat them with a hammer and a block of wood. Brute force is my methodology. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you follow along. I hope you dig the little apocalypse forerunner build and uh, we'll continue on. By the way, this engine, I'm not intending to put this in until like April or May. So I have plenty of time between now and then. So uh, until next time, we'll see you. see you guys later on social media. Thanks for watching.